Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I don't know why my voice did that weird little blip there, but I said I was going to make a video about every single tiny step along the way with regard to this whole hopefully getting published situation. This step is kind of was a bit unexpected, but not completely unexpected, but it wasn't ideal exactly, but it's fine. It's the way things go sometimes. But it is an extra step that I was not uh, fully expecting, although I did think it was possible. But anyways, I'm babbling. The point is, basically, the previous step is um, that my agent sent me what's called the editorial letter, and I, it's the letter is an understatement. It's a big giant document that's like, here are the five million things that I would like you to change for improving the book so that way when we send it to publishers that they will think, wow, this is sparkling, perfectly edited, and we won't have to do practically anything to it, except that's really not true. Basically, we're back to square one once it gets over at a publisher, and then they will have another gigantic editorial letter to send me. She sent me that letter, and then we also had a one-on-one -on -one discussion via Zoom about it, it, just to make sure everything was nice and clear. And then also within the manuscript itself, she had left copious notes um, about word changes, things like that, um, uh, big picture stuff, like this whole chapter is going a little slow, let's tighten it up. And I mentioned all of this in the previous video. So I went ahead and sent, I did all of that. I went ahead and sent it back to her. I was actually going to send it back to her even sooner than I did. And I warned her ahead of time because she was like, take two to three weeks or three to four weeks. And I was like, oh, by the way, I think I'll have this done in less than a week. And she was like, dear God, no, <laughs> take your time. And I wasn't really hearing her at the time, to be honest with you. I was like, oh, I'm just super fast. Like, that's ridiculous. But I did think for a second and realized, you know what? There is actually a way to really overhaul the beginning a little bit and I can really condense some things. So never mind. I am going to take my time. I'll, that draft is done, but now I'm going to do a brand new draft where I really streamline the beginning, which is going to involve taking out a whole chapter and all kinds of things, um, but to really condense things. And uh, so anyways, I did that. And also as a result, that affected some things at the end. So anyways, I finished all of that, and then I was like, okay, here it is. And I sent it to her, and she's got a billion other clients, you know, well, not a billion, she's got like five other clients, I think, right now. So, um, which is not much, you know, usually agents have tons, so I would usually be waiting even longer, but she's a junior agent, so she's, you know, slowly building her, her client base. So I don't have to wait nearly as long as I probably would usually have to wait, so that's a benefit. But um, eventually she did get back to me. She went back through the manuscript again. And then just, I was gonna say yesterday, but that's not true at all. It was like five days ago. She sent me an email. What I'm expecting at this point is, now that I've done all of that, all the big picture stuff is taken care of, next step would usually be the line edit stage. And that's where she will have gone through my manuscript with a fine tooth comb now that all the big picture stuff is taken care of. Now we're going to look at each and every single little word and say, ah, uh, you use the word um, conspicuous in this paragraph. And then just again, three paragraphs later, you use the word conspicuous. Let's, let's vary that word choice unless there's a logical reason why we're for stylistic reasons, reusing the same word or, you know, things like that. So every, or you know, this sentence is worded a little funky, highlight it, I will reword it, things like that. So that's what I'm expecting, but not quite. <laughs> she read the new stuff in the manuscript, and anyway, she sent me back basically a second editorial letter, much shorter this time, but you know, it was like, I really like that you did take care of this and this and this and this, you know. The sandwich method, if you're familiar with it, you, you give, um, you know, say what you like in the front, say what needs to be fixed, and then sandwich it with another, you know, I'm, this is exciting and good kind of situation. So anyways, she did have a good 10 things to say, and then also left notes within the manuscript itself. Some of them were line editing stuff that I was like, 
are we there yet? Is this also line editing? Are we combining uh, another editorial letter and line editing into the same thing? But not really. I guess she just figured while I'm at it, I may as well point out some of the biggest offenders line editing wise. And one of her issues with my, as far as line editing goes, one of her issues is that I overuse the phrase, I guess. And that is true in real life. Like, I bet if I am in the process of editing this video, I will have probably said I guess like 20 times, but probably not actually because of this edit pass, which is now maybe super focused on the phrase I guess, and now I guess I don't say it as much um, as a result. But in any case, I overuse that phrase tons, and it's kind of like my filler phrase, but it's also like a way that I mitigate things that, you know, if I'm trying to say something harsh to my partner or a friend, I will often append, I guess, at the end of it to sort of deflate the uh, the tension a little bit. Like, you know, uh, that we, I, you know, we really shouldn't do this thing, I guess. You know, instead of we really shouldn't do this thing, then I add, I guess, to kind of smooth it over a little bit. And that is true in my writing too. Every single character, this is bad writing on my part, every single character also does that. No, one character should do that and that should be the main character if any character is going to do it. So I was a bit resistant at first. I was like, wow, that's a perfectly fine turn of phrase. But then I was like, okay, rule, the rule to myself, here comes my dog. The rule to myself is if it is anybody other than the main character, I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out and uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. Like there are some cases where the main character's love interest says it towards the end. And that makes sense to me because you start to take on your romantic partner's turns of phrase and gestures and whatnot a little bit. Have you noticed that in a relationship you slowly start to absorb inflections and phrases and things? So that made sense as long as, because there was basically one specific one at the end of, towards the end of the book, where I'm like, the sentence just doesn't work without, I guess, at the end. So I'm gonna leave it in, even though it's this one character who's not the main character who says it. Um, and that's fine because at this point he's taken on his, my dog is looking at me. You can, you can come, you can come, that's fine. You can come up. Um, where was I before my dog interrupted me? So, yeah, but, it, and even with the main character, my next rule for myself was, as I was combing through a hundred and something instances of, I guess, was, uh, if it's not absolutely necessary for the structure of the sentence, and also if it's a thought and not dialogue, then that's a whole other kettle of fish. Because I can imagine that in his head, he's probably not going to be saying, I guess, nearly as much if it's just narration, unless it, abs unless it ruins the flow of the sentence. So I went ahead and basically yanked out, uh, out of the 150, like 100 of them. So there's still like 50 in there. Um, things like that. And then other things that she wanted me to fix was I had written a whole brand new chapter towards the end of the book that should have always been a whole chapter anyway and used to, in earlier drafts, just be like a paragraph. And it's like a big climatic conclusion to a plot point and I just summarized it down to, and so then the main character does do this and that and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, that should be in the moment, present tense. Like this is a big conclusion to a plot point. So I went ahead and wrote that as a whole chapter, but I kind of overwrote it. And so she was like, let's quicken this, quicken this chapter a little bit. Like it went from one paragraph to an entire longest chapter. Let's maybe find a midpoint between those two. So I was able to figure that out, which just basically involved removing one step in that process. Um, it, I, I really wanted that chapter to feel like I was bringing all the characters in like a team to solve one particular problem. And as a result, I had like an ancillary character involved and it's like, no, we can just use like the, one of the character's best friend's dads. And I was like, no, he, he his advice will be funneled through 
her, the main character's friend, so we don't, we don't need her dad involved in the chapter. Um, so anyway, stuff like that. And anyway, so I, I worked very diligently, and since my, I'm not currently training at a personal training, you know, facility, I have like a handful of like online clients and a handful of in-person clients, but it's not like I'm back to 40 hours a week or anything. Um, because of this whole COVID situation. So basically gyms are not really hiring too many personal trainers right now. So that's kind of worked out for me a little bit because I'm able to still scrape by with uh, the clients that I do have, but um, and able to focus on this whole writing thing. So as a result, I'm able to devote practically all day every day to these edits. And so I was able to finish it. And then I thought, oh, if I try to send it to her now, in just like three days, she's gonna freak out and be like, no, take your time, like she did last time, but I'm done. <laughs> but I was like, no, 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 here's what I'll do. I'll force myself to look through that chapter again that I condensed, make sure that that's written well. Um, I'm gonna look through this other thing and make sure that that still flows decently. And I did change a couple more things, but nothing dramatic, like it would have been fine if I would have censored the previous version. I italicized a few words. Um, to add some emphasis, and I just changed the word order of one sentence that was perfectly fine the way it was, but just slightly better, um, moving the... Anyway, so, and then I did, finally, I was like, okay, fine. I'm, I was planning on just waiting exactly a week, but I was like, that's just pointless. Like, it's done, I'll just send it to her now. So I sent it to her yesterday, so now um, she's like, okay, great, you write, you do this way too fast, but that's fine. Uh, not way too fast, she said, you're extremely fast, or something like that, which I think is kind of code for her being like, that's, that's a little too fast, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, she's going to read that, and she says she'll get to that as soon as she can, and then, so long as she doesn't have any other major changes, we'll move on to the line editing phase. So, fingers crossed that she doesn't read through this and go, uh you still didn't take care of X, Y, or Z, or, you know, things like that. As a writer, that's what you worry about when you're working with somebody in an editorial situation is, you try your best, but still sometimes you're like, but did I quite accomplish that? Like, sure, I removed that one step in that chapter, but is that enough? Was she really hoping that I would like slice that chapter in half? She didn't say that, but, uh. Maybe that's what she wants, and I didn't do that, so maybe she'll read that chapter and say, still reading kind of slow. Um, and I really don't know how else to quicken it yet at this current time. So anyways, this video is going on way longer than I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was just gonna be like, and I had another editorial pass. But anyways, the hope is she reads it, and then this is the line edit phase, and then I don't even know what that's like. I don't know what to expect with the line edit phase, except like practically every sentence she might have uh, a problem with. Hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully the plan is she likes my writing enough that she won't have a problem with every sentence I write. But you know, that will be a bit of a back and forth debate, I bet, on some sentences because of some other suggestions she made where I was like, I don't know, I think it was better the way it was before, and so I will explain in notes why, um, uh, one tiny, like, here's one tiny little thing. I wrote a sentence that's something like, some dude bro kind of guy is saying something like, yeah, well, dude doesn't even know what's up. And she was like, put the word the in there. So it now reads, yeah, but the dude doesn't even know what's up. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> no the, <laughs> it, it's dude, it's just, it's just dude. It's, I don't know if this is just a Portland thing, but you know, like my friends will say like, just use the word dude as a replacement for like, if the character's name is Charles or something, then you swap in dude for Charles. And it's like, yeah, but Charles doesn't even know what's up. Yeah, but dude doesn't even know what's up. Not, yeah, but the dude, that dude doesn't even know what's up. No, no the or that, it's just dude. So I tried to explain that to her and a silly little miscommunication. I hope if she ever watches this video, she doesn't uh, take offense to what I'm about to say. But in her note, she was, uh, so I was like, I don't know if it's a Portland thing, but you know, this is a thing we do. We swap out the word dude or bro for a person's name. So the is not necessary. And so she was like, oh, okay, fine. In the note, 
But then she changed it back and put the word the in. Now, I don't know if she did that or if there was just some weird technical malfunction. And so somehow it put her change back in there. Or if she was like, yeah, that's fine, but no. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I took it out again. <laughs> but uh, things like that where I'm like, mm, there might be some back and forth. But, you know. Anyways, the exciting thing is, hopefully, Jesus, this video is going to be too long. The exciting thing is, uh, this pass, this upcoming pass will probably be the final pass before we then head on out to the publisher. So that's horrifying. And then you think like, okay, great. So they buy your book and then they print it. No. Then we go through this whole process of editor editorial passes all over again. Things have streamlined a little bit where before there used to be like four different editors. You would go through four different editorial passes with a publisher. So like the first editor would kind of do what she did with the editorial letter and like do big picture stuff like, okay, the middle part's going too slow. What if we do this or that instead? And like not give me specific suggestions, but just big picture general stuff. And then I rewrite a whole new draft, possibly yanking out whole chapters or rewriting whole chapters from scratch with new plot points or whatever. And then after I do that, excuse me, I think I just burped. And then after that, a new editor comes along and is in charge of, so I send that in, and then a new editor comes in and is in charge of things like uh, continuity. There's like a continuity editor. I think they've condensed that down in this day and age to where, oh, my dog's about to freak out because the UPS guy's here. Um, but I think they've condensed that down in this day and age, so it's just like two different editors. Because then after that, there is a line editor and then another editor and stuff like that. But I don't know. we'll see. I'll keep you updated on all these different steps. And then eventually, after all of those different editorial passes and like two years or something like that is how long all of this will take, then the book will come out. So hopefully we just get a book deal. But anyways, for now, I'm just hoping to, I'm just looking forward to going through the line edit phase uh, with my agents. So fingers crossed that that goes well. See you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.